It has been said that a, a statesman is a dead politician. President Truman said that. And I gave examples. I said, Errol Barrow is a national hero in Barbados. But when he was alive, those opposed to him said that he was a partisan politician. So you do good work, but while you're in the rough and tumble, those who are there with you would see you as a politician. History makes the judgment about you. And that is how I made it. And then that now becomes an issue. Ralph is not a statesman. He's a pure politician. But they forget the analysis which was given. But you know, one of the things why I believe that I survive all the slings and arrows of misfortune. Almighty God sees how my enemies try to distort what I say. And sometimes some who claim that they have a higher hold on God than anybody else, I pray for them. I pray for them. I can't critique everything, my dear. I'm an honorable member. I can't critique everything. If you will discover, and you may be discovering it. You see, maybe your only job now is that of a senator and doing your enthusiasm work. No, what I'm saying, so you may have time to respond to every little thing somebody says about you. Me, from the vantage point of all my years of experience, I respond only to those things which I consider worthwhile responding to. And I, and I ride the other things with the grace of Almighty God. Now, Mr. Speaker, I came here following upon what the Governor General, His Excellency, said on December the 29th about attitudes to work and production. And I elaborated on it in my speech. Because when the Governor General spoke, he spoke on behalf of the government. And the persons, some persons may not understand this. The Governor General, thrown speech is drafted in the office of the Prime Minister. And the, the draft is sent to the Governor General, and he makes the, 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 the editing and so forth. And what edi edi editing he makes, or any insertions, it comes back. The cabinet secretary brings it to me. Mr. Prime Minister, this seems to be in order. Mr. Cabinet secretary, if it's in order, fine. That's how the throne speech is crafted. So what is represented there has the support of the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Because the governor general represents a constitutional monarch. And his role is clearly defined in the Constitution. Now, Mr. Speaker, not one member of the opposition has addressed the question of attitudes to work and production. And everybody who is here knows, everybody who is listening to me knows that this is a challenge which we have in our country. In the private sector, in the public sector. Why? One of the things which voters don't want to hear is that at least some people think voters don't want to hear is to say to them you need to work a little harder and smarter. But we say it. And the people agree with us. It's in our manifesto too, you know. Improving attitudes to work and production as one of the critical factors 
in lifting the economy. But that is statesmanship. On the other side, they're ducking it. They're afraid to touch it. Some people are afraid to walk the streets of Ashton or Clifton to say, boy, you're talking about working harder. I just want the money, me, 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 no money. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah? Fellas are afraid of that. Not me, not this government. You know why? Because the people know that we are a government for the poor and the working people and the nation as a whole. And when we come to speak to them like that, we come to speak to them in their own interest and to lift all of us up together. Mr. Speaker, I have come and I have spoken openly and frankly throughout this whole region about the insurance issues and matters touching upon the responses of regional governments. Let's talk openly about wastage. When I spoke first about wastage at the medical stores, and when I talked also about things go missing, and that not just ordinary workers who necessarily will take them, I got a torrent of criticism NDP, everybody for them on the radio station from captain right down back to cook were, were criticizing me. They were criticizing me until it came out bit by bit that the comrade was talking the truth. Until And then all of a sudden, the opposition now begin to accept that as the truth and say, ah, look at what is happening at the medical stores and bringing documentation to show what was happening at the medical stores. Documentation, no doubt, supplied by somebody who from inside was seeking to unseat the, the, the member for Mariqua. But uh, we, 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 we see how that happened. We see how that panned out. Mr. Speaker, this government is not afraid to tackle the difficult issues. That's why we are not afraid to tackle the matter of constitutional reform about which people were talking so long. That's why we were not afraid to tackle the kinds of activities which were going on in public works and you required an organization like BRAGSA to bring a new structural frame to deliver value for money for the people of St. Vincent and Grenadines and so on and so forth. Never ever are we afraid of handling matters which are apparently unpopular. We go and we explain them to the people. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Leader of the Opposition got on his rail high horse about jobs. He says the budget has nothing to do with jobs, when in fact it is one of the central objectives of the budget. Not only is it in the title of the budget, the issue of jobs recur throughout the budget. If the Honorable Member for Central Kingston had done the count about job creation, he'd have found far more references than, it, than Thomas. This budget, the, the, the title of this budget Fiscal and financial stabilization, job creation, wealth creation, and social safety at the tail end of the recession. 
and I will point out a number of issues in the budget as I go along in my wrap-up, Mr. Speaker, which touch on concern and which interferes with job creation. But I want to address the issue of jobs. The Honorable Leader of the Opposition, he takes a document from the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, which is an organization which he also damned in his speech. But he used this. He used this and said that they show that for the NIS, for 2010, you had over 5,000 persons less as active employees. Now, in a country like this, if you have 5,000 persons less active employees, and you have it between 2008 and 2009, and then between 2009 and 2010, there'd be riot on the streets. So everybody, he himself must have known that something is wrong with the numbers. And he, he tried to be crafty and said, if even we discount it by 50%, 2,000 and something is still a big number. That's how he did it, you know. He knew. He knew that that couldn't be true, that something was wrong with the data. And that is why I told him that when you want to get the correct data for any particular year, you have to wait until the end of the first quarter of the subsequent year, until all the reconciliations are done. Because companies, including the government, will send in the payments, but would not necessarily send the names of the persons or the numbers of persons they're paying for. And then the NIS personnel would go to them and do the reconciliation. So what is really the truth? Incidentally, when I told the leader of the opposition this, he said, well, it worked the other way then when you overstate it but I don't overstate it I know what the, how the statistics are collected so I would give you the final number for a particular year after the reconciliation and then I will also know what is the number I can give you which is a reasonable approximation because they would have an idea as to the extent of the non-compliance of employers so he tried to make a comeback, but it's a comeback with no, with, with no point. I mean, it's, it's, it's nothing. He, just is, he was caught, and then he said something which had absolutely no meaning. I didn't bother with him again because I had made my point. I had made my point, and I knew that in this wrap-up, I will give the data. Let's deal with the data. First of all, he's wrong that between 2008 and 2009 that you had a decline in the number of employees active. In 2008, it was 38,069, and in 2009, it was 38,192. So that is the first error. It was more rather than less. So rather than being 2,500 less, it was actually 100 and something more. What, what, what can you make of the leader of the opposition when he, when he sullies? whatever reputation he has an economy, as an economist. That's why I say he's now a caricature. 